I want to welcome everybody to Sunday School here at Bristol Baptist Church on the Facebook page. It's good to see you. It's been a hot week, but I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're in this cool building this morning. Before we get started, I want to ask a favor of specifically the members of our Sunday School class, the people that were members before we stopped having Sunday School or when it got delayed to sign in to either uh, make a comment or give the thumbs up thing. I, I'm planning something for the future and I'd like to know the members of our class that are watching this morning. Of course, I want everybody that normally signs in to sign in. I like seeing your names on there and, and who's watching, but if the members of our class would do that, I sure would appreciate that. And I'm going straight to prayer requests right now. We've got several this week. Several of them are good news. Uh, I heard from Miranda Funderburg today, her good friend who's been on our prayer list, Cheryl Cox. She had the COVID virus, but she's doing much better now and it expressed her appreciation for all the Bristol prayers. I also heard from Stephanie Scott this afternoon and she's been cleared to go back to work. She's feeling much better. And Stephanie also appreciate, uh, appreciates the Bristol prayers. We need to remember the, fr uh, the family of, Miss, of Jimmy Ellis. He's well known by a lot of people here at Brister and he passed away and just keep his family in your prayers in the days to come. Scotty and Blair Pennington, they got a brand new baby and Blair and, and Zaley are both doing good. Probably came home, this is Thursday evening, probably came home today, hope so. And pray for them and continue to keep Scotty in your prayers. He doesn't like too many more treatments and they're beginning to have a little bit of an effect on him. So keep Scotty in your prayers in the days to come. And also we need to always keep uh, Troy and Miss Louise in our prayers. Just remember them and what they're going through right now and their families. With that in mind, I'm gonna ask my good friend, Mike Madden to come give us our prayer. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mike. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for who you are and I thank you for all you do for us and, and every day, whether we realize it or not, we know that you're right there with us and I thank you for the fact that you're right here in this building as we speak and, and anytime two or three are gathered that you're gonna be right there with them. I thank you for this church and I thank you for the families that we have represented here from the youngest all the way to the, the senior adults and. I specifically want to pray for Troy and Miss, Miss Louise right now because they go through so much that it's a tough time to be sick. And I just pray that you will lift them up and, and make them better real soon. And I thank you so much for our military personnel and all they do to protect us and to secure the freedoms that we enjoy right here in the United States of America. And those freedoms aren't free. I mean, they, there's so many people have lost their lives and I just pray for the families who, who have lost loved ones fighting for this country. I thank you so much for the freedom to talk to you. I thank you so much for the comfort that you hear every word. And I thank you for all that you are and I pray for the ones that don't know you. I mean, there's so many and I don't know how they make it through these troubling times. I pray for this country all that we're going through, I take comfort in knowing that you know exactly what it is and that we will be better in due time. I thank you so much for my family. I thank you for my children and how good they are and, and how they follow you. And that, that makes me feel good. And I pray that I will live my life in such a way that other people will see you and want to know more about you. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I thank you, Mike. And it's like Mike said, it, you can feel when we're in God's house, you can feel his presence here. And, and that's an important reason to come be in God's house. And, and it's just really a good feeling to know God's right here with us. But I appreciate that prayer so much. And just to review, and we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 2 again. We're staying on this study. But just to review, last week we saw that we're saved by the unmerited grace of God. 
But with this grace comes some responsibilities. We are to do God's work. We're, we're to bear fruits. We're to go out in the world and, and let people see that we're a beacon for the Lord. After this, then Paul addressed all the Gentiles in general. He wasn't just talking to the people of Ephesus in these few verses. And he told them, y'all were without Christ. And you were without his promises. You were without his hope. And sadly, you were separated from, from, from God. But then he said, God decided, or God, it was time for God to reconcile everybody. And he did this, and he sent Christ. And Christ broke down this separation of people, thus making the Jews and the Gentiles one group of people, the saved. They weren't Jews and Gentiles anymore. They were the saved. And because of Jesus, the wall separating the sinner from heaven was broke down as well. And that's where we're going to pick up this morning. And we're going to look at a verse we read last week, but we need to look at it again just briefly to set today's lesson up. And in chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 16, it's just a simple verse, but it says a lot. It says, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity one body now and like I said God broke down the separation but we need to look at this one a little bit more because it's very important we're one in Christ and that's where I'm going to pick up in verse 19 chapter 2 of Ephesians verse 19 tells us now and remember we're one God has made us one so what happens next we're at that point now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. It says, you're no longer strangers and foreigners. Here, and once again, the, the uh, people would have known what he was talking about. A stranger that he refers to is a transient. And a transient is just a short time or a short term resident of a locality. They're just passing through. A transient had no legal rights. And he uses the word foreigner. A foreigner in this situation is someone, they're a permanent resident, but they have very limited rights. They're, they're not a native of that area. They've moved to that area. They don't have the rights. He said, but forget about that. He said, because now you're a citizen. You're, you're not a foreigner. You're not a stranger because of Jesus Christ, you're a citizen. And a citizen, and we all know this, is a person that's a part of a nation. And when you're a citizen, you have all the legal rights of that nation. You have everything that that nation has to offer. You, you're, it's available to you. And that's what he's telling these people at Ephesus, in the church there. He said, y'all have, have Jesus Christ now. That wall has been broke down. You have full access to everything that Jesus Christ has to offer. Take advantage of it. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to 1 Peter chapter 2. It's a great verse, and I've marked it in my Bible. You might want to mark this in your Bible and read sometime if you're feeling down or something but like i say now these people are part of a nation and in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 we read but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. And that ought to make everybody's heart feel good. You're, you're chosen. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, special people. I mean, Peter says it all there. And that's what you are now that you have Jesus Christ. You're one nation. But let's keep looking because it gets even better. And in verse 19, he said that you are a fellow citizen. He said, 
that you're no longer strangers but fellow, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You're a member of the family. You, you know, you're not on the outside looking in anymore. You're not only a nation, but you're a member of the family. And being in the family implies togetherness and inclusion. You're, you're a part of the family. And, and this is personal here, but I felt this the first time, the first few Sundays that I walked into Bristol Baptist Church and it was in the whole old church over there. But Miss Brenda Waller, Linda Ball, Buddy Kyle, that, that first morning, they all made me feel welcome. They made me feel like I was a part of something special and I appreciate them for doing that. It means a lot, but that's what you are now, that you've got God, got Jesus Christ. You're one nation, you're one family, but let's keep going with that. But we got to remember this, in Exodus, when they were out there wandering around in the desert, lost for 40 years, God dwelt in the tabernacle. They would set up a tabernacle. That's where they'd have their church services, for lack of a better word. But beginning in Kings, God dwelt in the temple. They built the temple there in the, in the promised land, and that's where God dwelt. But then Jesus Christ was put on this earth, and for 33 years, God dwelt in Jesus Christ on this earth. But when Jesus was called to heaven, when he ascended to heaven, God then dwelt in the church, and that's where he dwells today. God dwells in the church, and he doesn't dwell, and he does. And once again, Mike said it so good in his prayer, God's in the house, but God's not just in the house. He's in the hearts of the people that are a part of this church. The, the building in the church, it's the people in the church that make it. And I, I like Brister saying that the church has left the building. It's not this building. The church in the building, it's the people in the building in Jesus Christ in their heart. And that's what he's saying there in verses 20 through 22. We need to read those now. It says, having built, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. God's in the church now. This is his dwelling place. He's in the building, but more importantly, he's in our hearts, the people that come to this. So we have one nation, one family. We have one great holy tabernacle, one great church here that we're a part of. But we need to look at those scriptures a little bit closer because there's some strong scriptures there. The found, and it says, and I want to read this once again, it says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, the foundation of this church was built on the spiritual heritage of the prophets and the apostles. It's based on the ones that had a firsthand view of the Old Testament, ones that actually walked the earth with Jesus Christ. They had a firsthand view of what Jesus was teaching. They studied the scriptures, the scrolls. They knew all about the Old Testament. And, and that's what the church, the foundation, is built on. It, it wasn't built on some hearsay evidence or, or something that, that people dreamed up. These people saw it firsthand face to face. It's not built on modern ideas or, or popular trends of the day. This church was built 2,000 years ago, and it's just as important the reasons it was built then as it is today. And that's something we don't need to be changing. It, in popular culture, everybody's trying to change the church, and we need to have a more modern church, teach, teach more things that are open. We need 
to preach what the apostles and, and, and the scholars taught, the prophets taught when, when they established uh, the church. It's built on that foundation. But even more so than that, it says in there, and I want to read this too, it says, Jesus Christ, him himself, being the chief cornerstone. When it's built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles, the cornerstone that they laid, that they said, the cap rock, the, the foundation was Jesus Christ. And that's a great thing. And that's a spiritual truth that we need to never forget. That's what holds it all together. Just like the, the foundation is held together here by the cornerstone, the cornerstone of Jesus Christ holds it all together. And that's why the church continues in 2020 to be the strong institution it is. We don't need to be trying to change the church to fit modern trends. We need to keep the church as it was intended. Now, that pretty much closes out chapter 2 of Ephesians. And just to look back, just a little bit, bit of review on it, we have two questions that we need to ask ourselves. You know, as it, church members, have you experienced the unmerited grace of Jesus Christ? And if you hadn't, you know, you don't need to go another day without experiencing that because that's a great thing to have. And if you have experienced it, if you do know Jesus Christ is your Savior, that's great. But are you bearing good fruits like he wants us to? Are you doing good works for those out there in the world and in, in his name, not in our name? And one more thing in chapter 2 that we need to remember just to review is Paul told the people of Ephesus to be reconciled with God. It's never too late. And when you are, you'll have one nation, one family, and one temple. And that's a great thing to have. Now, we're just going to briefly touch on chapter 3. There's not a whole lot I can do with chapter 3 in the amount of time that I have left. And I don't want to, to, to start blindly next week. But in chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse 1, we read the following. And, of course, this is still Paul. Chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse 1, tells us, For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. In chapter 3, Paul gives himself two titles or two names or two ways to recognize him. And the first one is a prisoner. But notice who he's a prisoner of. He, he says, I'm not a prisoner of this jail. I'm a prisoner for Jesus Christ. That's why I'm here. Now, he's sitting in a jail cell and, and, and writing this letter. But he says, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and, and that's where my heart needs to be. No matter what, I'm, I'm, I'm in Jesus Christ. But he's in jail there in Rome for preaching the gospel, for teaching the, the good news, and teaching that it was available to all people. And that's why he says there in verse 1, he says, I'm in jail because I was preaching to you, you Gentiles. I, I'm in here because of you. And he wants them to understand that. And you got to remember, he's in that jail. The Orthodox Jews had nothing for the Gentiles. They, they thought of the Gentiles as dogs. The, the Jewish Christians, the ones that had started following Christ, they weren't much better in their views of the Gentiles. But, but Paul came along and said, yeah, said, said Christ came for everybody. And that got everybody upset. And that's why he's in the prison right now. Brother Eric talked about that about two weeks ago in one of his sermons. And it was a great sermon and a great lesson on why Paul was in jail. If you missed it, it it'd be well worth your time to go listen to it. But we see that Paul, he says, I'm a prisoner in here because I'm teaching you the good news. So what's he doing? It says in verse 2, chapter 3, verse 2. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. 
dispensation, and that's a big word for me. I'm, I have to look it up. But dispensation, stewardship, the responsibility, the administration of, of doing a, a job. And he said, God's given me this disposition dispensation he's given me a job to do and let's go back to acts 9 and, and look at this job that god has given him to do acts 9 verse 15 and i'm going to read it and then i'll i'll talk about it but in verse 9 uh, chapter 9 of acts verse 15 it says but the lord said to him go for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. This is a situation. Paul, as you know, when he was Saul, had a life-changing experience on the Damascus Road when Jesus Christ came to him. Now Jesus is telling a man named Ananias, he says, you go down there and you baptize Paul. Paul's converted. He, he, he needs to be baptized. Ananias didn't want to go do it. He, I, I've heard about this man, how he persecuted the Jews and everything. But then Jesus, Jesus told him, said, you go. He's a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles. Jesus gave Paul a job to do, and it was bear witness to the Gentiles. He's to preach the good news to them. And now, because he obeyed Christ, because he was doing his job, he's sitting in a Roman jail. And that, that, that's not a good place to be, and I'm going to talk about that in the uh, next week. But what we need to look at here is Paul took the responsibilities that Jesus Christ gave to him, and he took them seriously. He took them serious enough that he was willing to go to jail to do what Christ told him to do. And I have to look at myself this Sunday morning. What, what am I willing to do for Christ? Am I willing to go to jail? I, I've never been faced with that situation, but it's a question we all need to ask ourselves. Are, are we willing to do whatever Christ asks us to do, no matter the consequences? I'm going to uh, stop right here and pick up next week. But as we go out in the world this week, you know, God told us to take his word, or Jesus Christ told us to take his word to everybody. Are we doing that? It's something that I need to do. Once again, I hope you'll, you'll uh, sign in, or I'm not sure of the Facebook lingo, or do a thumbs up, or, or whatever, if you're one of our class members, because once again, I'm trying to do something for the future. I sure would appreciate it. It's been good to be with y'all again. I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.